Hey, buckaroos and buckarettes, it's good to be back with you. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about statically indeterminate structures. So why am I sitting here with a guitar in my hand? Well, um, guitars are fun. We can play them. But this is this guitar is a member of a class of structures called statically indeterminate structures. And a statically indeterminate structure is one where you cannot find the loads in the structure using only the rules of statics. The neck on this thing, I mean, this, this isn't a beam, nothing is. And it's got strings and tension going down the neck. So far, so good. There are six strings on this thing. So if you just want to find the loads kind of on average in the neck, uh, you can kind of add up the effects of the strings, but if you want to find out what the loads are in the individual strings, can't do that. Statics doesn't let you do that. Strength of Materials does, a little more advanced uh, structures class, and Finite Elements definitely does. That's the next one after Strength of Materials. Statics doesn't. This is a statically indeterminate structure. So let's maybe learn a little bit more about what a statically indeterminate structure is. Let me put this back first. All right, here's a simple example of a statically indeterminate structure. This is a beam like we've seen before. It's cantilevered on the left end and it's got a roller support, so it's got a pin on the right end that'll only uh, resist vertical forces. Do people make structures like this? Sure, it happens all the time. But this one's statically indeterminate. And what that means is you, we cannot find the forces in this beam using only the rules of statics. Well, how do we know that? Well, let's see. We know there's a recipe for how to solve statics problems. It's four steps. First one is you need a working diagram. Well, that's a working diagram. Step two, you need a free body diagram. Well, we're going to have one of those in a minute. Step three, you write the equations of static equilibrium, which we'll do. And step four, you solve for something. That's it. Well, if that always works, maybe we should try that. My board's kind of little here, so I'm going to turn this into a free body diagram rather than draw another one out. Okay, all I did was cut my structure free of the supports to make it a free body diagram. I guess I need a positive sign convention here. There, now I've got a positive sign convention, so this really is a free body diagram now. And so I've got a vertical force at, at point B, I've got a vertical force at point A, and I'll call that FAY to distinguish it from FAX, which is horizontal. And I've got a moment about point A. All right, there's the free body diagram. There's step two. Step three, let's write out the equations of static equilibrium. So we can sum the forces in the x direction, we can sum the forces in the y direction, and we can sum the moments about some point. Well, let's sum them about point A. There's a lot going on there. It'd be nice to have that stuff cancel out. So sum of the forces in the x direction. Zero. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Now we kind of knew that since there were no forces in the horizontal direction that FAX had to be zero, but there it is. The math showed us. So let's sum the forces in the y direction. OK, that has to equal 0. OK, there's equation number 2. Last equation, let's sum the moments about some point. Let's sum the moments about point A. You can pick any point you want, but A works. Now, I'm drawing the circle around that A to indicate that's about point A. I don't want you to get confused between this and that. That's the actual moment. This is just notation for saying I'm summing the points about the moments about point A. So don't uh, don't mix those up. So let's see, that's positive. Okay, that was six meters, and it's trying to make the beam go clockwise. Well, that's against my positive sign convention, so that's negative. Okay, last one, FB. Now that's going to be rotate in a positive direction. 
All right, so there's my three equations. All I got to do now is solve, right? It's going to be a problem. Let's try something. Let's count up how many variables we have to solve for. Well, there's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. Four unknowns, three equations. It's not going to work, is it? You need as many equations as unknown. That might be the fundamental theorem of algebra, I think. Well, we already solved for that one. We already know f ax equals zero, so let's just get rid of that one. All right. Two equations, three unknowns. We're still stuck, aren't we? And the reason we're stuck is this is a statically indeterminate problem. We have three unknowns. If we, need, if we want to solve for them, we have to write another equation. Well, statics doesn't let you do that. Strength of materials does. So when you're done with statics and you move on to the next class, strength of materials, you'll start looking at what happens when structures are allowed to deform, and you start calculating deformed shapes of things, which we do not do in statics, and that really will let you write another equation, and you really can solve this kind of problem. So, a statically indeterminate problem is just one that you cannot solve using the equations of statics alone. And that's an example. Hope this helps. We'll talk to you next time.